This is the Dane Moore NBA podcast brought to you by Prize Picks coming at you Thursday afternoon. It's April 11th, and I am still out here in Denver wrapping up another wild week in, in Wolves World. The plan for this episode is to bring in Britt Robson here in a moment to discuss uh, the most important thing that happened this week, uh, which was, of course, last night's Wolves Nuggets matchup. But briefly, I wanted to hop on here to touch on some of the latest uh, related to the Wolves ownership transition or I'm not sure if we can call it that anymore. The Wolves ownership situation is maybe a better way to put it. Um, I think there are three things that have been made public this week that could use a little unpacking that I'm going to do now. Uh, one, we learned that the NBA, at least for now, is staying out of this situation, waiting for the mediation and arbitration process to take place. Uh, yesterday, Wednesday, April 10th, the NBA's Board of Governors met and afterwards, Commissioner Adam Silver, uh, he had a press conference in which he was obviously asked about the Wolves' ownership situation. When asked if the league would get involved, Silver said, it's not clear whether there will be a role for the league to get involved. On the one hand, Glenn Taylor is the seller of the franchise, and then with Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez as the buyers. They have a purchase agreement, and there's a dispute now in the purchase agreement. And in their purchase agreement, they, in essence, pre-agreed to a dispute resolution mechanism that includes mediation and arbitration, and that's where it stands. There is no role for the league in that process, end quote. Additionally, Silver was asked about how Mark Laurie said on this podcast that the only thing in the way of this deal going through was NBA approval, to which Silver responded, I can't say more other than that comment is at the heart of this dispute. The dispute is precisely that as to whether they had acted within the window of the option that Glenn Taylor had sold them. That's the very basis of the dispute. So that dispute will be resolved independent of the league office, end quote. And then finally, Silver wrapped up his responses about the Wolves by basically saying, we're never doing anything structured like this ever again. Silver said, quote, it's certainly not ideal to have a step transaction like this, end quote. So that was part one, the league element of it that we were waiting on, waiting to hear from Adam Silver and the Board of Governors. That's what we got. The second thing that came up this week was ESPN's report, also on Wednesday, that said Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez submitted a budget for next season of $171 million, $1 million below next season's luxury tax line. This one was obviously discouraging to hear uh, for Wolves fans, right? There's been a, a reaction there. And that's because it implies this team's core will have to be broken up in some way to cut cost. Uh, this idea of submitting a budget was also pretty easy for me uh, to ask around about because it just didn't really line up um, logically in my head. And I think the best way I can distill down what I understand is to say that this was a budget that was submitted, not necessarily the budget. I talked to one executive uh, from another team that said, we have over 100 budgets a year. They evolve based on performance. And I think that's the, the hope here for the Wolves. Now, that isn't to say that the Wolves didn't submit that budget. It isn't to say that it certainly won't be their budget. But it does suggest that their actual budget could be different than $171 million, which is below the luxury tax luxury tax line. So we will see if more information comes out on this or if it was just the latest sort of PR punch thrown in this in this battle. And then third uh, ownership related thing that came out this week, and this was this morning, Thursday, April 11th, was Sham Sharani of The Athletic reporting that Tim Conley has an opt out in his contract after this season. I have heard this and have had it confirmed to me as well, an opt-out two years into the contract that aligned with the time in which Lori and Rodriguez were set to take over. Uh, I have not been given any indication of that being something that Tim Conley is likely to opt to do and, and leave and opt out of his contract, but that does exist in the contract as The Athletic first reported. Uh, what I can add to this that I think is new is that this isn't the only, the, the opt-out clause isn't the only new element of Conley's contract that was previously uh, not reported. As I'm sure many of you remember, uh, it was reported when Tim Conley was hired that he also got a stake in ownership um, that was presented as a motivator for what pushed Conley uh, to leave Denver. I've been told and had it confirmed from multiple parties that Conley does not have an equity stake in the Timberwolves. Uh, when you look at who owns, for example, what percentage of the team Tim Conley is not one of those minority stakeholders. Now, 
Like many executives, Conley stands to benefit from the success and growth of the organization from a bonus standpoint. But the main thing I wanted to make clear in my reporting is that Conley is not a minority owner of the Wolves in the sense that he owns X percentage of the team. And that was the perception of the agreement when Conley was hired. Now, I'm sure there will be more to come in the process as information uh, continues to come out here. And I would just prepare those of you who are invested in this topic that this thing is going to be a process, uh, likely with more fireworks to come and hopefully a resolution, again, through that pre-agreed upon arbitration and mediation comes here shortly. Uh, that's all I have on ownership for this episode. The rest of today's show uh, will be all basketball at 60 Minutes with Britt Robson on last night's Wolves Nuggets game. Hey, yeah. All right, we are now joined by Britt Robson of Min Post to dig into last night's game uh, against the Nuggets. It was, um, obviously, it was, a, it was a huge game, Britt, um, in, in what it meant from a seating standpoint, but I think also from a gathering some more information for what this could potentially look like uh, in the playoffs or just kind of as a measuring stick um, against Denver. Also understanding it's an incomplete measuring stick, right? Because um, Carl wasn't a part of this game. And I want to talk about that too. And the the factor of, you know, integrating him into this specific to the Denver matchup. But let's start by just talking about what happened last night in that matchup. And I know you, you wrote a piece um, that is, that is coming out. Uh, to tomorrow on this and just sort of the on the sort of idea that skilled bigs is what this team this wolves team is is built on and they played against the most skilled big um in the league last night and he won um well again wolves wolves were missing theirs but um Jokic took over this game and I think that's where a lot of the plot points of this come off how well he played um, how the Wolves didn't play well in the non-Jokic minutes. I thought that um, was was really important, sort of the runs that they went off of there. But let's just start um, with Jokic, the Jokic matchup, and what he was able to do in that game. What stood out to you there? Well, I think what stood out to me is that he seemed wanting to get assists um, early in the game because he had very, very few you know, mm. uh, before. Uh, the ten, had, 10 total in the previous three matchups. Yeah, I mean, which is ridiculous that he oftentimes gets 10 in the game. Obviously, he's got how many triple doubles this season. So uh, I think that was important to him. I think it was also interesting that uh, the Wolves continued to not want to put Gobert on him, and then they had to put Gobert on him. And I think that was a breaking point, quite frankly, right. in terms of what they could do defensively. That is where Cat was missed. Ironically, Cat was missed more on defense than he was sure. on offense. Um, but what I find is that, you know, I mean, this is a guy who goes and rides horses, you know, 48 hours after winning a ring and almost skipping the parade and everything. But don't underestimate that he wants to win and comes up big in big games. He was 16 for 20 last night. And a lot of that was on the defensive player of the year. Yeah. Uh and he is also a very underrated defender. I mean, Ant made the quote last night about the fact that uh, he couldn't drive very well uh, because Gobert was in the lane. Now, some of that had to do with the Jokic. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, did I say Gobert? Yeah, Jokic was in the lane. So, um, I think. Uh, Another key part of this game was the, the non-Jokic minutes, I think, were handled extremely well by Christian Brown and Peyton Watson, mm -hmm. who are the kind of like the together are like the co-player of the game. Uh, right. Those two guys and Jokic, I think, were the, the reasons why this team won. Uh, Watson was phenomenal. Six blocks in, what, 20 minutes or something? Mm -hmm. And once they put Brown in for uh, Caldwell Pope, they were able to switch more easily on the perimeter, and that always had a big or somebody larger on Ant, which I think made a big difference in the second half. Ant had one assist after the first quarter. Um, so he said as much it, in the locker room after the game that you know that was what made it 
you know, so difficult was one in the non Jokic minutes, the, the switching that they faced there, but in the Jokic minutes too, just, I'm kind of like, call, you know, we always talk about like the high wall, like the high wall that the wolves play defensively kind of moves. What you're yeah. just seeing teams do against ant is building a wall and holding it and yeah. being like, and the right thing for ant to do is to get off the ball. But the opponent is like, and Jokic was just like, no, we, you have to get off of the ball here. We don't even want to play that, that game anymore. And and that's how they're, that's and how that they're was guard. very, very effective. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of that is because Nas Reed and Jade McDaniels are two of his safety valves. Uh, we're not hitting open shots, mm-hmm. um, which is huge. I mean, sure. Finch alluded to it in the post game. Um, and did too. Yeah. Okay. And so again, uh, but let's bring it back to your original question. Uh, the guy is going to win his third MVP award. It probably should be four. I thought he was better than Embiid last year. Um, he is the best player in basketball. He will go down in history as one of the top 10 players ever to play the game. Um, and we are watching it. I mean, people need to, yeah, he doesn't have the pinch me moments of, uh, you know, Jordan or Kobe or LeBron. Uh but that's only because he's so relatable. I mean, people like to think of the stars that they watch as being so different than them that they're being entertained, like, you know, right. like it's a Marvel superhero or something. And and Jokic is kind of like the Captain America of the Avengers, you know, he's like a human being who, <laughs> you know, somehow is along for the ride. And at the same time, he's outperforming everybody. His passing, his rebounding, his defense, he doesn't really have a weakness. Um, Well, the weakness comes in, and it is not his, but we know this in the matchup. What makes the matchup weaker for Denver is how they can guard Jokic when Aaron Gordon is on the floor, obviously, right? We've talked about this at length, guarding Jokic with the four, whether that's Cat, Nas, or Kyle Anderson, and then having go bear lurk. That works. It has worked. It's a pretty proven concept in those minutes that you are not going to stop Nikola Jokic, but that will help contain him, right? And and I thought what Denver did that worked better in this was being really effective when both Jokic and Gordon were not on the floor. One of them was on the floor. A lot of times that's the non-Jokic minutes. Gordon's out there. That worked. And the minutes when Jokic was out there without Gordon. So again, the Wolves can't play that matchup. Those worked as well. I thought particularly they worked well when Gobert was off the floor, right? So Jokic is out there. Now Nas or Kyle Anderson are your center and they're guarding Jokic. And that's a huge mismatch, right? Yep. But it's maybe helped out if the other one of them can help double. But if Gordon's not on the floor and there are shooters and, and Christian Brown is Brown is playing well and hitting his shots. You can't, you can't do that. It became painfully obvious that when Jokic was on the floor and Gordon wasn't, you had to have Gobert in the game. And we eventually got to that in the third quarter. And it was like, all right, Rudy, just take him, you know? And and Rudy well, had to give up sometimes. That again is the I mean, he was. He's ultra competitive, and when Rudy is beginning to lose control and the team is beginning to slip away, Mm. there is a decline in Rudy's effectiveness because he gets angry, Mm. and uh, he's prone to fouling. Last night, he was self-contained enough to give up some buckets that he normally never gives up. Right. Um, and it was actually the smart thing to do, but unfortunately, they're still baskets. They count the same. And I mean, so a lot of Jokic's points were ways in which Gobert is back in the almost like the Utah days. He was trying to do everything at once. And uh, well, well, then that's the thing is, while Rudy Gobert is unambiguously the defensive player of the year, right? The, this this season. There has, you know, and what you notice if you're watching all 82 Wolves games is there are some matchups where he's not as impactful defensively, kind of like the Jokic thing, right? Like the Jokic against the Wolves isn't as impactful. And what those matchups are is when Rudy is just guarding a really strong physical center 
one-on-one, right? And Sabonis is kind of line item number one there. And Sabonis in one-on-one situations, given his force, can hurt him. And that was kind of the question in the third quarter when the Wolves were like, all right, we got to ditch our normal plan here because it's not working or they're staggering Gordon off the floor. We can't go to it. All right, Rudy, it's you. And it went like it goes with Sabonis or has gone with Sabonis. And I don't think that's an incrimination of Gobert. You know, it's not what he's best at defensively. What it just says to me is you need cap. You just Mm -hmm. need cap in, in, in that situation because even if Gordon isn't off the, even if Gordon is off the floor, right, and they and Jokic is surrounded by shooters, Gobert can still kind of play that in between game a little bit more, right, and and impact Jokic in a help way with Cat, not as well as you can when Gordon is out there, but they just needed Cat particularly at that time and throughout the game and on the offensive side of the ball too. It was just the only time the defense worked or they looked comfortable playing defense was when both Aaron Gordon and Nikola Jokic were on the floor and they and the Wolves could play their preferred style of play guarding right. him. And, um, you know, in a playoff series, Denver's going to stagger that. They're going to do right. – they know that that's the advantage there too. Yeah, they're going to probably play 18 minutes a game where it's like that, but they're going to try and – get off of that is as much as they can. So the Wolves need a counter and the counter in the pocket is Carl Anthony Towns coming back. Does that solve everything? Maybe it, I think it answers a lot of questions from last night's game. Um, But I think it is at least encouraging that you have that card to play that you have, have not yet played. What, what do you, what do you think about the the absence of cat in that? Well, well, my take from this, to be honest with you is that, uh, the Wolves were so dominant in the last game. It was a perfect game. I mean, they were 19-0 and assist-to-turnover ratio in the first half. And, yeah, there was no Murray, but there was a lot of people around. I mean, they just played great ball. Mm-hmm. And um, so I don't want to overreact uh, because it was easy to see how they dominated the last meeting. But I will tell you that I thought this meeting – Denver left a lot in the bag. I mean, Jamal Murray didn't didn't really go off. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, Jamal Murray didn't have like a – he had one little spurt in the third quarter where he rang up, you know, three or four Mm -hmm. jumpers. But we've seen him get on a heater, and that's something they always have is, you know, let's let's run – I mean, the Murray-Jokic stuff wasn't as predominant. Another thing I thought was really fascinating – and I don't know whether this is a hometown scoring or not. I didn't have time to to go through every one of them. But Aaron Gordon had like nine assists or something. I mean, it was just a ridiculous total. I I don't I don't have it uh, up here in in front of me. I didn't. Yeah, I, I mean, he had really he, notice it. He had an. I know I didn't either, which is what makes me wonder if it was like hometown scoring or whether in fact he was just. Yeah, making, he had nine. He had nine. He just had. He was making the simple pass, you know, mm-hmm. and. And so that's, again, a sign that they didn't really have the Jokic assignment settled. And so I would imagine a lot of people were cheating on Jokic. I know Mike Conley got burned a couple of times Mm -hmm. when I watched him kind of cheating to make sure that, you know, maybe he could poke check something from Jokic on a spin or something. Right. And and then the other thing that Denver had – if, if, if I were Mike Malone and I could wish for one thing, I would wish for a return for the bench effectiveness that he had last season. It has been by far the biggest hole mm-hmm. in this team thus far this year. And last night delivered in spades. I mean, mm-hmm. even Reggie Jackson wasn't a total waste, you know, and he, he usually is. Uh, <laughs> um, and Peyton Watson, right. um, he, you know, he was a little Bruce Brown, a little Jeff Green. You know, I mean, on defense, he was really, really playing well. And then Brown, Christian, um, just really, really rugged, tough, you know, gets his face into things. It's it's becoming, put it this way, Denver's bench outplayed the Wolves bench last night. And if that happens, they're not going to win any games. Yeah, so we will... 
that should go without saying here that, you know, the if everybody watched the game, I mean, that has been a pattern of these last two that they've lost the non-Jokic minutes, which if you follow Denver at all and kind of how they've been going, that's where Denver normally gets killed, right? They lose in, in the non-Jokic minutes. It's the biggest weakness um, of, of that team. But I, I like how the the wolf like we're sitting here we know that reintegrating cat particularly into this matchup right is a benefit coming right and 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 i think honestly particularly to that matchup probably a really big one but oh, i agree with that i mean but, I, I and i know you asked me that question and i didn't answer it no no but, no no i well let me let me finish for sure so so there's there's that right the wolves have this coming back the yes. the cat piece but you're wise to point out that Murray wasn't Murray is another thing that can be more that can counteract some of that cat boost. And then Gordon has other ways in which to impact the game other than just being this problem, because it's not like, yes, Aaron Gordon's presence on the floor helps the wolves play their best and desired style of defense. But Aaron Gordon has other ways to impact the game. He's their best defender. Um, he, like you said, he had nine assists in this game. He does have some playmaking in his game for a four. I also remember last season, I think it was where it was the first time we were really like, huh, this works when you put, you know, it might've even been Kyle Anderson on right. Jokic right. and then, and then leave Gordon open. I think it was Gordon shot like four for 18 in that game. And we were like, look at this, this is a thing. But if you also look in that box score, if I'm remembering correctly, I think Gordon had almost he might have had double digit offensive rebounds mm, in that right, in that right, game. Right. And so the point is is that there's another thing there too that Gordon has another way to counteract and have an impact. Now I wouldn't have expected the bench to be one that can counteract some of the the cat growth there too, but it was last night and it has been. They won they won the non Jokic minutes two weeks ago when they right. when, when they, they played, got wiped out. Otherwise, you know, right. like so. Yes, reinforcements are coming for the Wolves, and that is broadly going to help them across the board. Cats, cat re returning, and definitely in this matchup will be there. But we're also talking about the Denver Nuggets, who are the NBA champions. And if I had to pick a team to win the championship today, I would pick them. Like they got some stuff here too so i don't say that to mean like the wolves can't beat them we've right. seen the wolves beat them you know right. and, and 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 they match up yeah. well i mean the, the what i found really crucial about the brown watson style is that how many times this season have we seen the wolves grind their opponents to dust in the second half mm -hmm. that happened last night the other way around yeah i mean Watson was a force and Brown is he's kind of like a big Monte Morris in the way he negotiates screens. I mean, he just, he bullies people. There's a lot of bruising going on. And, uh, and I think, I think Nas got worn down trying to guard Jokic. I thought mm -hmm. Nas was a tired player in the second half. Kyle Anderson never really had his mojo going for whatever reason. Uh, I think Ant, got ground down more than I'm used to seeing him. Um, and yeah, Cat certainly, um, Cat, when I, I mentioned the whole thing about the, you know, allowing Gobert to lurk and all this other stuff, uh, you know, the whole part of the Cat dynamic, but somebody on uh, Twitter responded, also, Cat has probably matched up with Jokic more than any other player in the NBA, and he's comfortable with it. He's familiar with Jokic. That's a good point. I mean, as good as Jokic is, Cat, you know, Cat's in his own weird way is a confidence player, meaning mm -hmm. when he's not feeling unconfident, he's right. much better. And he doesn't feel unconfident when he That's plays true. Jokic. That's true. And that is huge. same with Embiid too. Like yeah. you know, over yeah, exactly. over the years, like right. not to say that he's as good as them, but right. he plays well in those games because he's confident in his belief. Exactly against those guys. Uh, can, we, can we grab our, our, our first break? I, I yeah. do want to get into the Nas and Anderson point a little bit more because that sure. got that got a bit exposed. Uh, but today's show is is brought to you by Falling Knife Brewing Company. Um, and we just want to keep reminding you all that uh, Britt and I and Kyle uh, Tige will be doing a live show there 
on April 19th. Well, that's already in eight days. Um, it is the day before the actual playoffs start. The Wolves will have their first game on April 20th or April 21st. Uh, we'll find that out here, I guess, in the, the next few days. We just thought this would be a really cool time. It's a Friday night um, to get uh, listeners of the show together, Wolves fans, uh, to come together, do a live show, do you know what we've done many times at Falling Knife. I think this one will be fun. The timing uh, and the timing is, is is kind of perfect. I think there'll be a play-in game going on there uh, as well. So just mark that down um, on your calendars for April 19th, about 6 p.m. We'll do like a happy hour while we're setting up uh, that sort of thing, uh, ask questions and just, you know, get to, you know, have some FaceTime with uh, those of you who, who listen to the show. And then we will do the show probably uh, like seven to eight o'clock. We'll take a lot of listener questions there. And then I think there will be a play in game that night that we'll have uh, up on the screens there. And uh, I'll stick around to, to watch that too. So just mark that down April 19th, 6 PM, get there early for a seat. And then also if you're looking for a place to go watch the, the games, this weekend, Friday night uh, against the Hawks or on the Sunday matinee game, 2.30 against the Suns. You can uh, you can hunt over to Falling Knife for that as well. And then also just quickly uh, a reminder that uh, we are brought to you by Prize Picks and they have the Masters are, are going on now too. Uh, we typically are talking about NBA stuff and what you can do, Wolves games. I gave Brett, I gave a big recommendation to go under with all the ant stuff against the wizards. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't know everything I'm talking about here. Um, but it's, it's fun. It's just a way to, to, to play daily, uh, fantasy sports. So that's pricepicks.com or the price picks app. You can use the promo code Dane for a $100 sign up bonus. Um, all right, Brett, let's, uh, let's keep moving on specifics to that game. I think the main point we can keep talking about Jokic and the cat element of all of this, but I think the the undertone of that is, yeah, the Nas and Anderson did not play well in that game. That, right. that like the the delta between what Anderson and Reed did last night compared to what we think Cat could do in this match matchup is massive, right? And and honestly, it made I, us miss Cat much more. Let's put it that way. And it's it's just bigger than the the Murray plus Gordon plus bench thing that we were talking about. That it's is sheer size. Thing. I mean, it has to do with the fact the difference between, I mean, slow-mo has fantastic wingspan and great instincts. Doesn't mm -hmm. leave his feet easily. And Nas has become a very good quick defender. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them can handle Nikola Jokic. Um, they don't have the, the sheer tall and brawn Mm -hmm. That is necessary. Cat has both. Cat is, if he's not a legitimate seven footer, he's like just a shade under, and he's a legit 250, you know, 248, you know, whatever. But he is somebody who can bang with Jokic, and Jokic likes to bang. And watching Jokic bang against slow mo and uh, and Nas, and also. Jokic got in slow mo's head last night. Slow mo committed like three fouls and yelled at the ref, yeah. yelled at the refs, uh, and the whole thing, and probably pissed Tony Brothers off to the point where Tony Brothers decided not to call the obvious shove on uh, right. Robert. I mean, Jokic is is a is a mastermind in his own way, among his many many other skills. He's actually a bad flopper, but uh yeah, that one on Gobert where he just went <laughs> flying in the no, he's got like that, I don't know, that like big brother strength, you know, like the, that yeah. maddening, like yeah, there's nothing I can really do here just because my big brother is five years older than me and stronger, you know, and that's <laughs> that's what it that's what it felt like when when Kyle and, and Nas were were on him in that game. And I thought the Nuggets did a really good job of like causing misdirection when it was Nas and Kyle on the floor against Jokic there was that one play where they both go to Jokic and I think it was either Reggie Jackson or somebody just wide open to the lane for for a layup because both Nas and Kyle understandably that's right. reacted to Jokic remember, remember that, that? exactly yes and, and then and then later I think this was more in the the second half um they literally put Jokic on the one side and put all four other guys right. on, on the other side of the floor so it's now it's Nas or Kyle on an island there and you know, I mean, I want to give Nas and Kyle credit for in the past having done a good job against right. Jokic, again, within the context of Rudy's there, and so is Aaron Gordon. And, right. like, they can do that. Like, in the playoffs, 
you know, if Cat's on the bench and Rudy's still out there, I'm cool with putting Kyle Anderson or Nas on Jokic for a few minutes, provided Rudy can can help there. But like Denver's going to have counters to that to make it more tricky, and they did particularly last night uh, when 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 Rudy was was off the floor. Well, one of the things that struck me about last night is there's no substitute for having a season where you play into June. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that you really begin to understand the arc and heft yeah. of a of a big NBA season. And the Nuggets just seem like they have command of the tenor of the season. Sure. Uh, um, last night, I mean, I know Jokic's protestations that it wasn't a big game and and Malone saying, well, we just want to be healthy. And, you know, yeah. well, Peyton Watson certainly, certainly didn't think so. And Christian <laughs> Braun, I mean, did you see those guys? They were roid raging oh, is yeah. what it looked like in, you know, the last uh, six minutes. And obviously I don't, I'm not accusing them of being on steroids. Right. I think that they're, they're both really good they're young, active man. players. Young exactly, yeah. exactly the kind of players you want. And the fact that they've been able to develop Watson as well as they have, because they needed somebody to replace Bruce mm-hmm. Brown. Um, but this team, I think, is a machine. And it is going to be fascinating if, if indeed it comes down to Boston and Denver, as many people anticipate. That's mm-hmm. going to be an epic matchup. Um you know, a lot of ball to be played between now and then. And, yeah, and, and, and the Wolves are going to have something to say about it too. Like, oh, absolutely. You know, like th- I, I don't think this is. I mean, this is this game was a reminder, right, of of how high the bar is of Denver. And like, yeah. to be fair, and first of all, I'll say two things. One, I will say that they will not have something to say about whether or not Denver advances, in my opinion. Uh, but beyond that, what I will say is that they played Denver really well for three quarters before they tuckered out. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have Cat, but they played a very good game. I know Finch was kind of disappointed with the offense the entire game. I thought, you know, it was the the scores within five points of each other for three solid quarters. It was a wonderful game, you know. And that is a team, as I just got through saying, that takes the measure of people and knows how to play an entire NBA season – I mean, they weren't playing chopped liver out there, and they didn't have cat, and they played extremely well. But I think that Denver is on a different plane than than the Wolves are, um, which and the Wolves match up very well with them. I, you know, what Denver is going to do to its first round opponent, I think is going to be fascinating and brief. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think uh, off of this, one thing that you know stood out was not being able to take advantage of their size in the the wolves being able to take advantage of their size in the interior and punish there, particularly against the switching defense. Rudy talked about that. After I asked him about the, you know, the non Jokic minutes and what we need to do. He's like, all right, they switch, they switch that all the time. That's the same story we've been talking about. Those are the times in which we need to go on the inside, punish um, and do that, which they have done, you know, periodically over the course of the season. Um, the the problem without Cat is that becomes on Rudy and Nas. And Rudy has limitations, at least in the frequency with which he can do that, right? You Absolutely. know, probably, probably overall limitations and how he can do that. The interesting one is Nas. I remember at the beginning of the season, or do you remember this? Where Nas in the post just wasn't missing. It was post right. up bucket, bucket, bucket. I just actually looked it up while we were going. His first eight post-ups, he scored on seven of them. Yeah. Uh, and it was just it was just easy. If you look it up now, as I just did, um, if for players that have posted, have had 50 post-up possessions or more, there's 65 players in the NBA. And in terms of frequent in terms of effectiveness in those post-ups, Nas Reed is 64th. Mm. If you go up to 75, he's last. Jeremy Sohan is is below him um in that over 50. But of 70 that have posted up 75 times, Nas Reed has the worst post up efficiency in the league. It's not to say Nas Reed is a bad offensive player by any means. It's not to say he doesn't kind of have that in his game, but at a much slighter build and not having that be the main part of his offense, as we've seen his offense. That was going to be my point. I mean, and, and it, take off like Nas just, from distance and Nas off the bounce. 
right. have have become one and two in either order. Mm-hmm. And Ma's post ups, which actually I think was in his top two his first couple of years in the league, is now mm-hmm. you know uh, not a distant memory. But you're right about the fact that um, his shake and bake has been scouted. Yeah, uh, people know to strip him on the shake. You know. When he is trying to go up, he always has the habit of coming up with both hands away from his body just enough to get stripped fairly yep. easily. Um, that's been scouted. Well, that's what I was going to say, man. It's just been – he's now been scouted. Like, yeah. And the, the first real – you know, what what stood out – I mean, it's just this shell defense, right? That Phoenix game, you were, I was like, man, this is – this looks like Phoenix defense that's better than I'm used to. And I thought that – like. I thought Denver's defense was just really good last night. I think both of those teams had a really good defensive game plan and were well scouted for the primary offensive forces in, in that matchup. And we talked about putting two on the ball, creating that wall. And with Nas too, just kind of having that shell where he can't, even if he gets his wiggle and he gets somebody off of there, like the shell is pretty solid in the layers that, that it has that whether it's a strip, just making it harder for him to, to get to the basket and, you know, he got like he's getting bumped a little bit. Maybe he could get a, get a couple of fouls, but particularly with Cat out and the offense so clearly running through option one and, and option two, Nas, like they know that now. Right. And this is another having Cat in the mix sort of situation where I don't think you can be as scouted on Nas or give Ant as much attention as you have if Cat's back in the mix, just given his presence. And, and gravity there. But in this context, when Nas is being scouted the way he is and game plan for and the way that he has been, the, the highs just aren't going to be as high. Still a productive player, helpful player, all of those things. He's had a great month. Right. But, you know, you're the dude now. Like you're right. or you're one of the dudes. You're not right. like right. 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 you're not the sixth man, you know. Like right. and, and th- there's things that that uh, that come with that, particularly from a scouting standpoint. W- one of the things I wrote about in the column that'll be out tomorrow, um, that I think is kind of fascinating, is that Finch has talked fairly constantly about this. This team needs to be a top ten offense. Um, well, I looked it up. Over the last 10 games, the Wolves are 10th. <laughs> and it is because of that playmaking unit that comes on. And that unit got squashed like a bug last well, night. They, they're out there at the non Jokic minutes. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, it, it, it was interesting to me. If you recall when we had the Tuesday pregame presser with Finch, you asked him stuff about cats reintegration yeah. than i did yeah i actually played it on the the pod the next day so listeners and, know what we're talking about too okay and so and then one of the things i said well you also have these multiple point guard minutes do you think that you're going to be able to retain that mm-hmm. and he said minutes will get squeezed a little but yes the plan is to retain it and then he went with it last night i'm really interested to see over these next two games and then into the playoffs what that looks like Mm -hmm. in terms of personnel, because that is a way to combat what you're talking about. I mean, one of the dirty little secrets is during the non cat time, the starting lineup has sucked. I mean, you know, (laughs) it has, it has has not been good. They have a, a terrible net rating and that unit out there just doesn't mesh as well. And some of it, is because you are you there's only two heads on the entire snake and they cut them off and that's it right. you know and so yeah Nas and Ant have profited more in mixed lineups in this and time. sometimes together with the ball movers see mm-hmm. that's yeah, yeah, the yeah. thing and so what is going to be interesting is whether or not two things one is whether or not Cat's return can bolster that first unit back to at least its former status as a net ratings break even and a little above that you know they were like plus seven plus eight for a while which is which is a lot above it and then whether or not you could still have that uh blended unit of ant and or nas with a bunch of ball movers and conley out there at least some of the time um and if that can happen 
I mean, it obviously, obviously will depend upon the opponent. Uh, but I'm curious to see how long that can be a thing because it flies in the face of conventional playoff wisdom, which is that you shorten a bench and you start to play more ISO or at the very least set play basketball. And these guys are not set play. You know, J Mac is not a set play guy. Uh, you know, Monte Morris even is not necessarily a set play guy, although you're a little bit more so. Um, and slow-mo loves to have this not be set play guy. Nice. So again, if it can work, and it can be a thing in the playoffs, and you have cat back, that's where the ceiling is, I think, for this team, hmm. is you unlock Ant and Nas a little bit while you have these ball movers. The question then becomes, how much can you play Mike Conley, quite frankly? Well, so, well, and Mike, Mike played well last night, he too. Did. You can still, you can still play great. him. But, like, so, and this is specific to the non-Jokic minutes, but I think tangentially related to all matchups is oh, we talk about this all the time. Like the wolves have an extremely strict rotation Ant always plays the whole first quarter. Um, then he subs out for the first, you know, four and a half minutes of the second quarter. Same thing in the third whole third quarter comes back in with about seven and a half minutes to go uh, in the fourth. That's been his rotation the whole time. Now last night and specific to that matchup, five minutes, five minutes in the fourth quarter. It, it would have been nice to have Ant in for the non-Jokic minutes, right? What do they need there? I mean, in the, the non-Jokic minutes in the second quarter, the Wolves scored four points in four and a half minutes. I mean, they need offense. They needed offense in that matchup. And I just wonder, given the playmaking thing that you're talking about with that group, that bench group, in the playoffs, that group might need a little bit more of a guy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yep. I and do. and so again, Denver or not, I I think you need to have two of Ant, Nas, and Cat in the game in those in those minutes at unless know. Mike Conley is really going off, and that's tough. Yeah, and I mean, and, and he's normally out there too, so maybe he's yeah. you know maybe he's a part of that. What I'm saying is, this opens up a bigger can of worms of do you adjust your rotation that has sunk into cement over 80 games this season for the playoffs because it might be better for rotation combinations that you've now stumbled upon over the course of this non-cap period. I'm really interested to see. We know what the rotations look like during the regular season. What is it going to look like in the playoffs? I mean, we talk all the time about how many guys from the bench are even going to play. That's part of it too. Right. But I don't know, man. Like, the non Jokic minutes were were bad, not only in the plus minus that they lost them. That that in and of itself is bad. But what really stood out to me is once Jokic got back in, they went on runs mm -hmm. both times immediately after that. The non Jokic minutes got momentum for Denver. Not yeah. only got them, no, a I agree. Points, they I got the momentum. That's so, that's a very good point. I think that's a that is correct. I think that. How do you counter that? I, well, I don't I mean, know the again, answer. One of the things that we saw, we saw that Slow Mo had an extremely productive run as a nail point guard, mm -hmm. you know, and we saw J Mac have an extremely productive run as a combo guard, off ball, uh, weak side, three point shooter. Mm -hmm. um, are either one of those things sustainable in the battle of the playoffs? I mean, those are things. Hard to that's, on. that's an interesting gamble. Um, given how much J Mac, I mean, you heard me say it. I mean, just trust the numbers. I mean, the guy, he was zero last night, by the way. I mean, again, he was, a, <laughs> he's just an amazing. You would think that every time he was out there, they were getting well, closed. There were but, a yeah. lot of zeros in his stat line in this yeah. one. So, yes, plus minus of the yes. like, Nas was. Yeah plus three of the rotation players. Everyone yeah. else was negative. J-Mac was zero. Yeah. What's also happened in the, the J-Mac time is the plus minus has been great, but he's also filled up the rest of the stat sheet with yeah. steals, no, threes, all that. I, I mean, his his stat line last night is zero shots, uh, zero points, one yep. assist, one yep. steal, plus zero. 
in 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 the plus minus. So he needs to, he needs to still give you something, right? And and he didn't give that last night. But also to your broader point, like they just don't lose the minutes. J Max out there. Like, speaking speaking of zeros, look at Ants four four minutes and forty seven seconds of the fourth quarter last night. Yeah. There's nothing there. No. Seriously. There's nothing there. Well, that goes back to the two. On, I asked him about that, and that goes back to the you know the. I the dish to the people, and they have to hit it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, he, he basically said, yeah. you know, I'm giving the ball to people with, for wide open threes, and they're not making the threes. Is I mean, yeah, that was that was not, not in, but not in that uh, no, not in no, like no, a contentious no, exactly. way. Just no, to, no, just to no, clarify, no. it that. was just yeah. like no, no, no mm-hmm. blame, just facts. You know, I, and Chris yeah. asked him, which would I thought was good. He goes, well, in the playoffs, if that happens again. Like, do you continue to 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 do that? He goes, absolutely. I, I what I need to do is trust my teammates and 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 do that. And and I think broadly, that's the right answer. There, there's like a but there's a gray area there too. There, well, there is. My my last tweet last night basically said they have to start calling more set plays for Ant so that he doesn't face ISO situations, but does have a lot more touches to shoot. And I think that's the middle ground. You need to begin to like run the horns and run the staggers well, and you know basically do the things that you need to do to get Ann off. They had that scouted though, too. That like horns exit thing they yeah. do all the time. And it, 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 even in the first, I haven't rewatched the game, but like in the first half, just off the top of my head, um, they're know. forcing they're right forcing away. Ant to reject that screen, yep. you know. So then so then at that point, and, and it's not to say like you don't always have to follow the play by A, B, right. C, D. I'm not saying that, but the play becomes not a play when you miss A, you know. No, I and, get it. And and he and he was rejecting. So there's gotta be the trust in the teammates, which that is just cute. Like that that was his answer in and of itself, you know, is a win. But you're right to to the structure to right. How do we it may be a pure victory? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But he's got he's got to come complete it maybe that's what the gray area is it, you know is more structure more play set there in those times and executing in in that play structure something more than simply getting off the ball like well that, also a difference there because they are inviting him to get off the ball to Jade McDaniels. Certainly that was the plan in the fourth quarter mm-hmm. I mean Jade McDaniels was there wasn't 10 feet that nobody within 10 feet of him on his last two missed threes, you know, uh, that was a, that was by design. And, you know, Jaden has not been hitting from distance. He's got that mid range down and Mm -hmm. he's playing well in general. Yeah. But, um, that is one of those playoff things. X factor. Yeah. It it could be, could be, you know, something you got to start to worry about. I mean, and the answer there, except for last night, it, or maybe even the game before is is not. I mean, because not hits those for the most part. Right. That that that's true. Um, I I, I do want to give the Wolves some credit in the game last night. I thought the defense, particularly in the first half, was great. I mean, what we're talking about Denver's defense thwarting yep. some Wolves actions. The Wolves did that a lot. You know, last night, not in the fourth quarter. Often not. You know, but. Right in the, in the first half, that like we were talking about Murray a little bit before, like part of the reason Murray didn't play well was because the Wolves were blowing up a lot of what Denver was trying to get to. And I also think it's worth noting. I, I watched Denver's previous game from the night before, the back to back. Like Murray didn't play poorly because he's coming back from an injury. He looked no. great. He looked great in that Utah game. Like he's right. good. Like he's good and he's ready to go. He's been dealing with some stuff. I don't know, maybe by part of it, it was a back-to-back and he's been out for a while and that sort of stuff. But like, I think a lot, and that's a huge X factor on the other side in this series is how much can they limit Murray? And and the Wolves have a lot of answers for that. And one of the biggest answers is Jade McDaniels. And as someone who, you know, campaigned in the first few meetings between these teams in the regular season to have Naw on on Murray because of what he did in the playoffs last year, as opposed to McDaniels, McDaniels and Murray don't like each other. And it's very obvious on the court. I mean, they, they try to show each other up. Right. And um, it's a game within a game that gets nasty. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Both of them have a little bit of a temper. I, I worry that Jade McDaniels will be the first to, to break. Uh, you do have Nikhil uh, then too. I mean, that that's yeah, why I, I think it's... No, I just mean in terms of like, you know, hauling off and slugging them or just basically, you know, committing a really dumb foul or... Yeah. Uh, I mean, it... I I knew exactly when you brought up Murray, it was right after I said Jade McDaniels has been missing wide open threes and we... When we think of Jaden McDaniels last night, we think of two things. He missed some wide open shots and he was fantastic on Murray. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, he was, he, he handles screen so differently than the keel who tries to go over the screen. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, you know, basically go uh, not around, go through the screen yeah. and, and Naw goes uh, through, uh, through the screen and Jaden loops around, but he has a great idea where, He's going, and he's got the length to make up space that mm-hmm. that Na doesn't have. But I think it's great to watch him on Murray. Murray is Jim Pete had said last night on the broadcast that Murray is one of the most underrated players in the NBA. He's never been an All Star. I mean, it's ridiculous. The guy sure. is, and he's a he's a top fifteen playoff player. That's mm-hmm. for sure. You know, he's like. Jimmy Butler gets all this credit for elevating his game. Well, look at Jamal Murray. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a good comp. Yeah, like I mean, it was kind of that that one year where the Jimmy thing started was in the bubble, and Murray and Donovan Mitchell too had similar and things. When I mentioned Murray to Gobert the other night, he said, "I remember that when I yeah, was yeah, in yeah. the car." I remember. <laughs> I remember that spinning three sixty layup you hit on. <laughs> yeah, and he goes, I "Haven't forgot about that." No, he, I mean, and and to your point, like not joking like he he has a lot of respect for murray in that matchup too that it is not just about Jokic. but what i know about gobert is he has a lot of confidence and belief in Jaden mcdaniels yes he and does. Nikhil that Alexander whole team Walker. does yeah. yeah um the the one thing i wanted to say uh, about Jaden, he got lower defensively than i have seen in a long time mm. Like he kind of does, I was referred to it as like his umbrella contests. Like when he's on a small exactly. guy, it's rear view contest, but he just kind of has yep. his hand yep. over the top for it. Jaden was getting low in isolation. I've just noticed that over the course of the season compared to previous, you know, Jaden kind of settled into just being a little bit more up and big and obviously. Um, but that's how you with- foul. That's why that is a great counter. If he's low, it's harder to foul when you're low. Yeah, when look, look, look you, for it when you watch back. I mean, and, I and again, I'm going when you're high, high, you're top heavy, and when you're top heavy, you have a tendency to foul when you move sideways. Mm-hmm. I mean, the idea that if he can stay low, that I've been trying to figure out the reason why his fouls have dropped. He had like two fouls last night. Well, I mean, very, a lot of it is the refing adjustment too. I yeah, mean, I mean, I, not not to take away from Jaden, but no, like, no, no, I get a, it. That's right. a factor too. I mean, it hasn't affected some people. <laughs> broadly, broadly. No, no, I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah, like one more thing from this game that that you no, want to you want to hit on specifically? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I like I, what, what I just again broadly take away from this game is credit to Denver. Um, I this doesn't make a meaningful or like really large shift in my perception of what this would look like in a matchup. I mean, I would have said before, you know, I would have, if I had to, you know, gun to my head, pick a team to to win the series between the wolves and nuggets, I would, I would pick the nuggets in that. Sure. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm still there. I just say that to me and it, it isn't like my belief in, in that isn't way more after that game. And part of that is just, you know, simply the, the cat element of it, um, you know, bringing him back and that should answer some questions, but we've ran through a bunch of other things that didn't work in this game for the wolves that have pretty reasonable adjustments that we even threw out some of what, 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 what do we know compared to Chris right. Finch and Mike and Nori and all those, I mean, they're, I guarantee they were sitting down on the plane and doing that, running through all of that stuff. What can we do in the non Jokic minutes? Uh, what can we do to punish switching more often like, in this matchup? Like, it's not like there aren't levers for the wolves to pull in this matchup um, going forward. It, and and we'll, we'll see. It is just as simple as the fact that the wolves played out of their minds and Denver played so, so mm-hmm. when the wolves cleaned their clock a couple of weeks ago. Right. And 
Denver received some extraordinary performances from their bench, and Jokic was in his element, and this team is priming themselves for a long postseason that they have experience in doing that with. And and the Wolves missed Cat and didn't have a good night. I mean, the bench, this, the playmaking unit we were just talking about did not have a good night. Right. These things happen. It's the vagaries of – that's why there's – you know. That's why I'm ever thankful that this is no one and done tournament. Uh, You know, postseason is meant to see who's the better team. I still believe, especially after last night with the bench, the way it played, that the Nuggets are the better team. But I will tell you, I look forward to the Wolves playing Denver. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it is always a good time. It is always a fun basketball game to watch, even last night. Um, it, it just and I mean, incredible atmosphere in the game, um, not just in the stance on the court. The, I mean, it's just I know we share a mind here and it's just the basketball that we love to watch. Yes. Like I'm excited to rewatch that game. There's well, a lot that of starting things, five yeah. of Denver yeah. is, as Finch said it, you know, they are the most complimentary quintet in the NBA. They cock all the rough edges that each other has you know their skills overlap not very much but just enough to cover everything Mm -hmm. you know when they're on and everybody's playing well they don't have a big weakness they're not a bad rebounding team they're not a bad defensive team they can play in transition they can play in the half court I mean, there really isn't it's the a bench. Lot there. It's the bench of the nine Jokic minutes. Which yeah, and and last night was a, a shot across the bow to the rest of the NBA. If uh, Peyton Watson mm-hmm. has half the game he had last night, the league is in trouble. Yeah, and and they're gonna they played Gordon more in that unit as the backup five, and they're gonna do more of that in the playoffs, and that's why the nine Jokic minutes weren't as big of a problem in the playoffs last season as they. They were the regular season. So that's an advantage, for sure an advantage, going into that a playoff series for the Wolves, at least on paper, right? I mean, right, the Wolves right, are right. going to be as deep as it gets um, in, in the West, at least, from a bench standpoint, and the Nuggets aren't. Um, you do need to execute it, though, right? Like, we've learned – because this that wasn't a – again, that wasn't a blip last night. The Wolves have no. not been able uh, to, to take advantage there. And, yeah, I, I mean, it's just – it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, and I, right. I, I, my hope is that we get, we do get seven games of this. Um, and the Wolves, you know, now because they're not probably not going to be the one seed, um, are going to need to to work a little bit. Hard. Oh, what I was going to say, um, from like, I don't know, you were talking about the, you know, sort of the vibe and the feeling of all of it. I was really struck by going into the locker room and there was not a defeat about the group. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's just an interesting juxtaposition. It's the same locker room I walked into after game five uh, of the playoffs last year. And I remember specifically as I walked in there watching Ant like slam his phone on the ground and Rudy was really frustrated, you know, oh, they, they, uh, whatever, they, they had got knocked out of the playoffs. Right, but, right. Particularly frustrated in the result and 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 what happened there. I, I got the sense, and even from we talked to Rudy and Mike and Ant in actual media afterwards, and there was a there was a sense of yeah, there's more things we have to do to beat this team. You know, Mike said we know this is the team that we're we're chasing. Um, but and for all three of them, and I'm sorry I didn't play the the clips for for listeners, but I would recommend going and listening to that. Um, on YouTube because all three of Gobert and Conley and Edwards presented answers much like Britt and I have here of at least possible solutions to the things right. that that they weren't doing there, which which is why, again, that goes back to my whole, like, I, I respect Denver more, but it doesn't massively shift my opinion of, of how the, the result of that would go in the playoffs, like we're going to have to see. And that's why it's what more can you ask for, right? What more can you ask for than a like, all right, let's line it up in a seven game playoff series. Let's have both teams healthy and like, let's go. Chris Finch has done a marvelous job of getting this team emotionally ready for the playoffs in terms. They are playing very confidently. Um, The relationship between Ant and Cat 
is phenomenal right now. I mean, I, that really feels, uh, I, I, I wrote in the column, it feels a lot more genuine than performative to me. Um, you know, I, I think that um, they are beginning to, um, you know, mm-hmm. th- there's a vibe out there that is is a good vibe. I'll just close with this. I thought it was well, Ant had a couple banger quotes <laughs> uh, from from the the locker room last night. But you know, he's asked about you know now you're not going to be the one seed probably, and and he goes, well, we knew what this game was going to determine. So if we won it, we knew we was probably going to be the number one seed. If we lost it, we knew they was going to be uh, the one. So at this point, I think we cared before, but now that we lost. We can't do nothing about it, which kind of like <laughs> exactly. is, is classic amp, but it's also like that energy is that, that I guess that's that encapsulates the energy I felt walking in there. It doesn't give right. me anything right. at all, but um, don't that's... obsess over stupid things, which has a, been a, a bugaboo for this team for decades, yeah. you know, and they're <laughs> not going to obsess over stupid things, which yeah. is, you know, oh no, you know, we're not going to, you know. Uh, and and Rudy and Conley have a lot to do with that. Ant mm. Ant is becoming more Conley esque every day. You know, he is. He is. Yeah. No, they have a they have a good they have a good mentality about it. It's about um, do they have the ability to execute? and, yeah, and, and do and, this in a, in are a the space. vets and the youngsters? Um, is there are there sweet spots? overlapping enough to make a, a championship contender is what we'll find out in the next yeah. two two or three weeks. Can't wait. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be so fun. And there's going to be a bunch of stuff along Absolutely. the way too. There's, there's the Denver Wolves matchup theoretically, you know, coming down the line, <laughs> but there's, there's all these other things here. In I will be fairly ecstatic if there's a Denver Wolves matchup. Oh, I will yeah. tell you right now, that's the conference finals. And uh, that's, the, that's a territory the Wolves have gone to once. And so, I mean, that would be also, I mean, be honest with you, if they win a first round, it's a cop, you know, they've only gone to that once. So, but the playoffs, the first round of the playoffs is going to be a fearsome opponent. I mean, there are five 50 win teams. And when Golden State wins one of their next two games, five 45 win teams in the Western Conference. That is, that's never happened you know, mm-hmm. to, last year there were two fifty win teams and two forty five win teams. Yeah. They they've more than doubled it. They've gone from four teams forty five wins or more to ten teams forty five wins or more in a single conference. And, and so as a result, if you're a second seed, the seventh seed is not going to be your typical seven seed. It's going to be a 45 win team at minimum. And it's probably going to be a 47, 48 win team. Yeah. And, and, the, and those teams are good. And also those win totals are a hat tip to the wizards, the blazers, the pistons, the spurs, the, the terrible teams in the league. But this there's season. only really two Western teams. Well, maybe the Grizzlies. There are, there are three Western teams and even then, they're not the Eastern teams yeah. that are, you know. I mean, the Pistons and the Hornets and the Wizards, mm-hmm. you put those three, there would be a couple of 56, 58 win teams added to the list right. that is going to be there in the West. No, your, your your broader point holds, you know, that the group of the eight teams that make the playoffs in the West are really good. Um, they've been helped by the bottom feeders in the West and the East, and they're just way better than – you know, they're just way better than the teams in in the East. Like, I mean, I was looking at the standings the other day, and it's like, is Orlando going to be the two seed in the East? I like that team, but like right. two seed, you know, yeah. the Knicks, the Bucks, the whatever. Like, it's um, yeah, it's 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 a loaded West, and uh, the Wolves are going to have their work cut out for them, even in the first round uh, again. You know, as the two seed or the or the well, the seed. two most likely matchups as we speak right now are the Pelicans or the Suns. <laughs> yeah. Those are, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm on record as preferring the Suns. I don't know whether the Suns have a hex on the Wolves or what the deal is. I know they've well, played terrible against them. I would feel a lot more in fear of the Suns if the Wolves played well and the Suns beat them. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, you know, I mean, maybe it's just my bias. I know I'm biased against Phoenix, but I also think that they are. have, they haven't. Uh, yeah demonstrated to me 
you know, they're not a good defensive team. And uh, they look good and, against Wolves, though. And their offense is is redundant. So I mean, it 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 does remain to be seen. And I will tell you, I mean, if if they they notch another win uh, on the final day of the season, uh, that's, no, not that's, awesome. that's not something that's not something you want to be going into the playoffs with having you know finishing zero and three against a team you need to beat four times in seven games. I know. No, that's going to be interesting. Uh, for for Sunday and you know how that all plays out. I guess the one advantage if they do wind up in the three is they know their opponent. Yeah. For the first round. I mean, there would be something deflating about falling to the three, but that would be, you know, the glass. But you know, Phoenix four. isn't out of the woods. If the Wolves yeah. win on Sunday, there's a pretty good chance they'll be number two. And there's also because Phoenix loses, be a pretty good chance that the Suns yeah. is seven. Yeah, they because- can maybe push themselves out of the Phoenix matchup. Uh, yeah, I mean, and whatever, we'll see. They got to beat, and you know, and I think that's the energy of the group, too. You know, they this team doesn't view winning the first round as the goal, and they also know that, um, they're going to be a good opponent, you know. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's good, you know, that now that it won't be the A seed, unless put it this way, Denver has to lose to Memphis and some uh, and, and San Antonio. Yeah. They have to lose one of those two games, and you know that's very unlikely. Yeah. And not that it won't happen, but they're the eight. They're the, they get the AC. They get the team, the nine ten. I was as as it now is. They'll get the legacy team that survives the Warriors and the Lakers. Uh, unless they beat the Kings, yeah. Unless the 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 uh, Warriors. I mean, the Lakers can can leapfrog over the Kings, which is entirely possible. Yeah. I've been watching the standings way too carefully. Lately. <laughs> I know. Yeah, me too. Because it's going to change day to day. Yeah, it, it is. Um, well, Britt, let's, uh, and I know we're going to do the, the show on Friday, but sure. uh, maybe let's, uh, let's try and get together on maybe Tuesday or Wednesday or something next week. Sure. To, yeah, five, once we have a, a, a better look at this um, and, you know, and, and yeah, cause we'll, we'll be taking, listener uh, attendee questions yeah yeah on the night. and we'll have kyle there too mm-hmm. so uh yeah let's do something you know the two of us doing something earlier and then show up at falling knife the beer is great i mean i'm not getting you know i don't do paid advertisements this is all about uh the fact that those guys are uh, basketball fans and they make good beer and it's a nice place to be and the questions are usually pretty intelligent, and so mm-hmm. I always have a good time there. I'm looking. Yeah, for no, it's 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 always it's always fun. It's cool. It's flattering um, in in all those ways to just you know see face to face you know people who've been who've been listening to us. And I think it'll yeah it'll be fun and and like a you know if you haven't been to Falling Knife too like a good opportunity to like get a feel for it and be like oh yeah maybe this is somewhere I want to come uh, for playoff games. Cause that's going to kind of be the spot for it. And they'll have that truck out there, TV truck in the patio a lot. I mean, it's going to, there's going to be a lot of people there for playoff games throughout the season. So this is a good way to kind of test it out too. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I can't believe, I can't believe the season's over. <laughs> like it's, it's all just, it's all, this is, well, it's been a crazy couple of weeks on, on multiple levels uh, for this team, but I'm excited to lock in uh, to basketball and the, the playoffs here going forward. Uh, Britt, I appreciate you doing it. Listeners, uh, Kyle and I are going to do uh, that live show on YouTube Sunday night. It'll be out in podcast form too on, on Monday, but we're going to take that just kind of like season's over, um, 7.30 p.m. We're going to get on, do live. You can get on and, and and watch live, ask us questions. We've done that four or five times uh, over the course of the season. We thought that'd be uh, cool too. So Bearing anything else too crazy, I think that'll be uh, the the next episode, both after the Atlanta um, and and Phoenix games. I don't know. Maybe if Cap returns on Friday, we'll do something on Saturday. But um, for sure, mark that down on Sunday night. That'll be fun. And then uh, Friday uh, at the following Friday at at Falling Knife again. That's April nineteenth. Get there at six p.m. He's Britt Robson. Check out his his column that will be out uh, at Mim Post. You can find that at mimpost.com, or I'm sure Britt will be. Uh, tweeting that out on uh, sometime Friday morning, Friday afternoon. Um, it's uh, I haven't read it yet. You sent it to me, um, but uh, I'm <laughs> sure it's a, a a dive in there as well. He's Britt Robson. Follow him on Twitter. Read him. You follow him on Twitter at Britt Robson. Read him at Min Post. I'm Dane at Dane Moore NBA. Until 
sometime this weekend or with uh with kyle on sunday uh peace out how i'm feeling man i hope it never stop yeah green and hot so you can find me in the crowd yeah yeah don't let standards ever ever bring you down yeah